In our lesson this week, we take a look at Jesus praying for his disciples. This prayer, it should not be confused with what we call the Lord's Prayer, where Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, and it should not be confused for the prayer in the garden, where Jesus was praying about the bitter cup that he was about to drink by picking up the cross and then dying for all of us. Our lesson opens this week with it being clear who Jesus is praying for. I want you to see there in the sixth verse that Jesus, he is praying about those who he had manifested the father's name to and those that the father had given to him out of the world. To be even more specific, Jesus is praying for those who had kept the father's word, he says there. And so we should understand that Jesus, he was praying for his closest followers. So to be clear, Jesus, he is praying for the 11 disciples, not including Judas Iscariot, because again, we know that by this point in time, that Judas Iscariot, that he left Jesus and the other disciples at the feast of Passover. Iscariot, he did not keep the word of the Lord. Judas Iscariot, he did not believe. And so because he did not believe, he was not covered in this prayer. Who Jesus was praying for is repeated and made clear in the next two verses of our lesson. Jesus repeats that he was praying for those who he had given the father's word again, and they had received them. Jesus says that they believed that the father had sent him. To be even more specific, Jesus in his prayer says there in the ninth verse, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me talking to the father. So, this was a prayer for Jesus's disciples. So why was Jesus praying for the disciples? And what was Jesus praying about for the disciples? We will see that Jesus, he was praying for the disciples because his time in the world was just about up. We know that he would go on to pray in the garden. And then after praying in the garden, Jesus, we know, was arrested and then he was crucified. So while Jesus would be leaving the world, the disciples, they will remain behind in the world and they will be in this world without him physically being there with them everywhere they went. So Jesus prays for the father to keep them. He prays for the father to care for the disciples. Jesus, he also prayed that the disciples, that they be one as the father and son are one. Let us understand that this prayer, it was a prayer for protection for the disciples. It was a prayer for the disciples to work in sync, to work in harmony. And I would suggest to all of you that when we work in harmony with each other, there is strength. So overall, I would say to all of you that this was a prayer for protection and it was a prayer for strength. So the question will be, well, what did they need protecting from and what would they need the strength to face? After the resurrection and ascension of Christ, the disciples, they would face a world that we live in every day. Jesus, he knew the kind of world that they were going to face, which is why he had warned them in the 15th chapter of John's gospel in the 19th verse that the world would hate them. The world would hate them because they were no longer of the world. Not only would the disciples face the hatred of the world, we should understand that our great adversary would persecute them as well. Paul, we must remember that he wrote to the Ephesians about this. He wrote that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against enemies of spiritual wickedness, enemies who are of the spiritual realm. We should understand that the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places that Paul spoke of are the same that we face today. What we face today, the disciples, they faced yesterday. So Jesus knew what they were going to face and he prayed for the father to watch over them. Just as he had done when the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness. The father watched over the children of Israel while they wandered in the wilderness. He protected them. He cared for them. Jesus, he prayed for the disciples to be in harmony with each other because again, when you work as one, you're able to withstand, you're able to accomplish much. 
So we should understand that again, this was a prayer that was for the disciples, for the 11. And we should understand that this was a prayer for their strength and that this was a prayer for their protection. Now we will then see that Jesus prayed these things so that the disciples could have his joy fulfilled in them. Again, this was essentially a prayer for strength when he was praying about their joy. You see, the joy of salvation, it gives us hope. And hope in our salvation through Christ is our victory. With hope and joy, the disciples, they would be able to stand strong in a world that would try to tear them down. So some may begin to wonder, well, if Jesus knew the kind of world that the disciples would face, the, the kind of world that those who followed him would live in, why didn't he just take them out of the world at that point in time with him? This thought, it touches on the thought that I touched on in my last sermon about the harvest of God, where I asked and I even answered the question, why does the Lord allow the bad to live with the good? Whether you realize it or not, life is still a gift. The Lord, he desires for the good to flourish in this world. He desires for all of those who are of faith in him to flourish for all of those that are around them. He was not going to cut the disciples off before they began to flourish, before they were able to bear fruit in the world. Jesus, he understood this. And he said that he wasn't praying for them to be taken out of the world there in the 15th verse. Jesus, he knew the father's will for the disciples to bear the good fruit of the spirit. So he prayed again that they be kept from the evil one so that they could bear that good fruit. So again, our great enemy is not flesh and blood. As I said in my sermon last week, our enemy is the devil, we know. And the devil, he desires to ruin the harvest of the Lord. The devil doesn't want us to prosper. He doesn't want the Lord to be happy. And so we find that this is why Jesus prayed. This is why he prayed for our strength. This is why Jesus, he prayed for our protection. Now, one last thing we see Jesus pray for on behalf of the disciples is that while they are in the world, that they be sanctified by the truth, sanctified. To be sanctified means to be set apart from or to be separated from something. In this case, the disciples were to be set apart from the world. They were to be set apart from the world by the divine truth. They had received the divine truth and were to live in the divine truth. Jesus' shed blood and the sound doctrine of God, the word of God, it separates us from all of those who are of the world. And when I say us, I'm talking about all of us who have genuinely believed in the only begotten son of God. Through our faith in him, through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit, by the word of God, you and I, we are able to bear fruit that is holy and righteous. Whereas those who are of the world, if they are bearing fruit, they're not bearing fruit that is holy and righteous. The fruit that they bear, it is of the world. Therefore, it is corrupt. It is of sin. And so our fruit compared to the world's fruit is easily distinguishable. It can be seen by all of us. And if we can recognize the fruit of those that are around us, you better believe that the Lord can certainly tell the difference between the fruit that is holy and righteous and the fruit that is of the world. So on that note, we see that Jesus state that this prayer wasn't just for the 11 disciples that remain with him, but it was for all of those who would believe in him. Do you believe today? Do you believe in Christ through the eyewitness report of the disciples? If you do, then Jesus, he has prayed for you. Jesus prays that all believers be one as he and the Father were, and that we be steadfast in our genuine faith in him. So Jesus' prayer, it was for all of us. And again, when I say us, I'm talking about all of us who have genuinely believed in him. Jesus, he knew what we would face living in this world. Because again, we are not of this world, we are hated by the world, and we are then persecuted by our great adversary, who again is the devil. So Jesus, 
people ask, why did he pray? Why did he pray if he was God? Jesus in his human nature, he was compelled to pray for all of us, just as we are compelled to pray for our loved ones, our friends and our acquaintances, especially when they are going through things. Jesus, he being like us living in the flesh, he felt compelled to pray for all of us. So I would say to all of you today that we should be grateful, that we should be thankful, that we should be appreciative that the Lord prayed for us. And the fact that he prayed for us should make us, it should force us, I would say, to live within that prayer. Live being grateful that, again, God loves you, he cares for you, and he prayed for you. We should, again, value the strength that Jesus prayed for for us. We should value the fact that Jesus prayed for us to live in harmony. And the way that we value that is by, again, moving in love. We should love one another as we love ourselves. When we do these things, again, there is power. We are able to withstand this world, and we certainly are able to withstand the devil. And again, when we withstand these things, we overcome and we have victory. I tell you today that there was victory and there is victory in the prayer of Jesus for all of us, his disciples. Thank you.